This is a long overdue review for Parasite Rex by Carl Zimmer. Um, I've been a fan of his for pretty much ever since I read this book, and everything that that guy writes is amazing. Uh, this book, though, especially, was the first one that I had ever read by him, and I think still today it's his best work yet. Um, and uh, I read it about two to three years ago, I think around that time. I hadn't taken any, uh, I guess, advanced level biology classes or any uh, microbiology or even, I think I would not even gone to college at that point. So, um, But actually looking back at it now, with the knowledge that I have, I guess, accumulated over the time since, I can honestly say that one of the things that I love the most about this is the fact that as, I, as I'm sitting here thinking about it with the discoveries that we've made and the advances that we've made in biotechnology, you know, we're talking about CRISPR just recently being discovered and how, you know, amazing that was. But that was a discovery that was made in Escheria coli. That was something that we've known about for a very long period of time. I think if you want to talk about the future of biotechnology, if you want to talk about the future of medicine, a lot of that is going to lie in the biodiversity and the mechanisms that we have of, of parasites, right? I mean, if you're still debating whether or not you should read this book, and I'll talk about the details and the presentation and the format and all that stuff, read chapter four. Once you read chapter four, look it over, and if you liked chapter four, you will love this book, and if you didn't like chapter four, you won't like this book. But if you're like sitting at a Barnes & Noble and you're thinking, oh, should I read this? That'll help you decide whether or not you want to buy it. Because to me, learning about just that much biodiversity, about the fact that there are parasites that can actually not just alter their hosts, they can hijack their hosts. I mean, imagine a surgeon that could give you a sex change, make your bone structures different, make you behave different, and, and change your physiology all without picking up a scalpel. Imagine something that could do that. And, and, and one of the things that I think is so awesome about this, and especially whenever he, he lists all of these amazing mechanisms that parasites have to, to alter their hosts and sometimes influence their host's behavior and in other times literally give their hosts sex change operations, it's the fact that they can do it with such accuracy and such precision. I mean, there's we have not yet ever, in, even in our greatest chemistry and in our greatest understanding of biology, been able to alter our own cells' gene expressions down to the to a level of precision that parasites have. They are the greatest chemists in the world, and they are the greatest surgeons in the world. And I was I was totally blown away by that that this is such an interesting topic, that this is such a, uh, a amusing topic to write about and that yet no one ever talks about it in, in, in microbiology or in, in anything, really. Like we don't, parasitology is kind of like a, a luxury thing and it's kind of this, I don't understand why people have the attitudes that they have about it. But anyways, as far as the presentation and the format, uh, one of the things that I noticed is that a lot of Carl Zimmer's uh, writings are kind of they're all kind of the same in a good way, if that makes sense. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He always kind of talks about the history of it, and then from the history he builds up to the more modern experiments that have been done to kind of deduce how we got to this point. He doesn't just say that things are the way that they are. He explains the experiments really to a level of precision that was greater than what I've seen in my textbooks, which is really sad that I could learn more from reading about Carl Zimmer than I could from my actual you know, textbook information there. And uh, he, he slowly kind of talks about the past, the present, and then the future, and, and the roles that each and everything plays in it. Um, the presentation and formatting of it is very well done. It's very smooth. He's a very, very, very good writer. And uh, what makes it so nice is the fact that it's like this breath of fresh air because I don't. It's not like a textbook that's this boring, monotonous, just data dump. Listening to him ex describe the experiences that he's gone through, listening to him seeing firsthand uh, a patient with sleeping sickness in Africa, describing just, just that first part, I think in the prologue, where he describes this kid with, a, I think it was a trypanosomes infection, submerges you there. You're submerged right there. And it's as if you feel the reality of, of what was happening that Carl was witnessing. You feel that. You don't just you don't just understand the information, you experience it. And that's why this book is so awesome. So yeah, the presentation and format of it is is very well done. I really, really, really liked it. Pros, everything. Cons, nothing. Uh, sources cited, yes. And this is an overall 10 out of 10. Um, if, if you don't like Carl Zimmer, then whatever. But this is the greatest book that I've ever read written by him. 
um, to this day. Microcosm was good. Planet of Viruses was good. And the stuff that he's written for the New York Times and National Geographic, that's all good and great. But Parasite Rex, to me, was one of the most influential books that I've ever read in my career.